Chapter 3 The Hope That Is Within You 1 Peter 3 verses 1 to 6 Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that, if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Genesis 18 verse 12 Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also, whose daughters ye all, as long as ye do well, just because they all descended from Abraham and Sarah, did not make them the Israel of God. Their obedience to the covenant made them the Israel of God and spiritual daughters of Sarah, as well as physical daughters of Sarah. 1 Peter 3 verses 7 to 9 Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. The weaker vessel, women are weaker physically than men are, as being heirs together of the grace of life. Hebrews 1 verse 14 Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them, who shall be heirs of salvation? Hebrews 6 verse 17 Wherein God, willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise, the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath. James 2 verse 5 Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? That ye should inherit a blessing, the blessing that descendants of Abraham will inherit if they are believers is the kingdom itself and ruling with Christ in his kingdom. Genesis 12 verses 2 to 3, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Those Gentiles in the tribulation period who bless Israel will be blessed in the kingdom. 1 Peter 3 verses 10 to 17, For he that will love life, and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile, let him eschew evil, and do good, let him seek peace, and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you, if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that, whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing, than for evil-doing. The hope that is in you, believing kingdom saints in the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 verse 7, will have many opportunities to witness to their fellow countrymen during those terrible days that lie ahead. The hope is Jesus Christ being the Christ, the Son of God. 1 Peter 3 verse 18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Being put to death in the flesh, this speaks of Christ's death on the cross, but quickened by the Spirit. This means to be made alive by the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 3 verse 19 By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Christ went to the spirits in prison and preached to them by the power of the Holy Spirit mentioned in verse 18. And people have argued, and will continue to argue, about, who it was that Christ preached to, and where it was that he preached to them from. Was Christ in the torment side of hell? First of all, could Abraham hear the rich man from the torment side of hell all the way across the great gulf between them? Absolutely. So, Christ could have preached from one side to other. Could Christ, who is all-powerful, have crossed the gulf if he indeed preached to them in the torment side? Absolutely. But did he? We don't know. Remember Christ was both God and man, and his flesh was in the grave at this time, not his divinity. We will get a little more information in the following chapter to give us some more context. Was he preaching to the spirits? fallen angels who left their first estate, 
or was he preaching to the saved in paradise? I am not sure why he would say those in paradise were in prison though, but they are said to be captives while they are there. Psalm 68 verse 18, Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts for men, yeah, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Others will say he was in hell, preaching the gospel to the lost since Adam's day. I totally disagree with that liberal guess. It is called universal reconciliation. 1 Peter 3 verse 20, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a-preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The long-suffering of God, Exodus 34 verse 6, And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and truth, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16 How be it for this, cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long-suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. 2 Peter 3 verses 9 and 15 The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water, the water killed all of those whose generations who were not perfect as was Noah's was. Notice in Genesis 6 that Noah found grace because his generations were perfect, which meant that his lineage was not infected by the mingling of the sons of God and the daughters of men. 1 Peter 3 verse 21, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The like figure, whereunto even baptism, doth also now save us. Peter is writing to the Jewish saints that were the strangers that were scattered abroad. Acts 8 and 11 19. 1 Peter 1 verse 1. If you will remember the kingdom saints were told in Acts 2 verse 38 to repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. In Mark, they were told, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We are not told that in the body of Christ today by our apostle of the Gentiles. We are saved by grace through faith alone, without baptism or any other ordinance. Notice he, Peter, linked himself, and the readers, together with Noah's family in regard to water having a part in their salvation, not the body of Christ. Water doesn't save us. Paul, in fact, said Christ sent him not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. The twelve on the other hand, were sent to baptize as a part of the Great Commission. The answer of a good conscience toward God, water never could wash away the filth of the flesh, this speaks about a person's sins, not dirt. As someone in the kingdom program was baptized in water, they would ceremonially become a part of that priesthood of believers that was promised unto the children of Israel in Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6. Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. 1 Peter 3 verse 22, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Psalm 110 verse 1 a Psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Matthew 28 verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Chapter 4 Suffering in the Flesh 1 Peter 4 verses 1 to 2 For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. He that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, when you suffer for righteousness' sake, you cease to be unrighteous for the time being. Those that suffer in the flesh during the time of the tribulation period cease from sin for the time being as well. This does not mean that they cannot sin, but they choose to suffer instead of enjoying the pleasures of sin for that season when the Antichrist will be tempting Israel to sin. These Jewish saints were to arm their minds with the same mind that Christ had. What a waste it would be for them having believed on Christ, to live out the rest of their lives living for the flesh. What good would that do others? 1 Peter 4 verses 3 to 5 For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, 
wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Notice that Peter separates himself and his readers, the Jewish kingdom saints, who were scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, etc. At the persecution of Stephen in Acts chapter 8, he separates them from the Gentiles and even compares his readers and himself with the Gentiles, which should help you to understand he is not writing to Gentiles in the church. There is neither Jew nor Greek in the body of Christ today, but one new man. Ephesians 2 verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, him that is ready to judge, this speaks of Jesus Christ. The quick and the dead, the quick are those that are alive, the dead are those that need to be resurrected. 1 Peter 4 verse 6, For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. The gospel preached also to them that are dead. The verse here plainly says that the gospel was preached also to them that are dead, those that are still lost which implies that it was also preached to them that are alive. They will be judged for rejecting the Son of God, and for all that the Word contained, whether they knew it or not. They should have accepted it and taken it to heart. 1 Peter 4 verses 7 to 10, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The end of all things is at hand. Peter is writing a Hebrew epistle to a bunch of Hebrews that have been scattered amongst the Gentiles, and he tells them to live right among the lost Jews and Gentiles in their midst, because there is not much time left. 1 Peter 4 verse 11, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Speak as the oracles of God. Peter instructs these Jewish kingdom saints to speak and minister as he did, not selfishly but as a servant faithfully doing as his master did for an example. 1 Peter 4 verses 12 to 13 Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that, when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. The fiery trial which is to try you, this is the time of Jacob's trouble that is to come upon Israel and the world, but it was put on hold for God to usher in the mystery program called the dispensation of grace. That fiery trial will still come upon Israel, because it is promised in God's word. 1 Peter 4 verses 14 to 16, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Peter tells them to glory in the persecutions, and to not be an evildoer, and turn around and claim you are being persecuted. Peter is admonishing them to live a life above reproach. 1 Peter 4 verses 17 to 19, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing, as unto a faithful creator. Peter says that the righteous are scarcely saved. That is not what Paul says about us in the body of Christ. We have eternal security today, and we cannot be any less or more saved than we are right now. That could not be said to Peter's Jewish kingdom saints, who were told to endure unto the end. Chapter 5 Feed the Flock of God 1 Peter 5 verse 1 The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Peter in another place says he was an eyewitness of his, Christ's, majesty. In other words, he was saying he saw Christ in his messianic kingdom glory on the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses and Elijah. A partaker of the glory that shall be revealed, all who make it into the kingdom will partake of that glory. 1 Peter 5 verses 2 to 4 Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, 
but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory, that fadeth not away. Feed the flock of God which is among you. This verse is very important for the elders, shepherds, of these end-time churches in the time of Jacob's trouble to be Christ-like, and not to use the terrible time they are enduring as an excuse to lord over their flocks. They need to be examples to their flocks, how to live through tribulations. Remember what Jesus told Peter after his resurrection? John 21 verses 15 to 17, So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. 1 Peter 5 verses 5 to 7 Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yeah, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Peter is talking about the younger elders submitting themselves to the older elders that serve as shepherds over the churches they are over. There is a lot of wisdom that a young man can learn from an elder in the faith. That advice is good for all people of faith in that age, but it transcends dispensational boundaries as well. Who could not benefit from submitting to someone wiser than ourselves? Who cannot benefit from being submissive one to another? That is exactly what a team does. They work together, not seeking their own glory, but the teens. 1 Peter 5 verses 8 to 9 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Resist steadfast in the faith, these Jews that are scattered amongst the Gentiles will not be alone. The devil at this time especially will be seeking to devour as many as he can devour. Your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. This verse implies that there are those he can and cannot devour. He cannot devour those who resist him in the faith, because they are kept by their faith as mentioned in chapter 1 of the same epistle. This is not doctrine for the dispensation of grace, but doctrine for Israel at the worst time of their history. 1 Peter 5 verses 10 to 11, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. After that ye have suffered a while, Peter instructs these tribulation saints that they will receive grace through their sufferings, and their sufferings, like Christ's, will make them perfect, a finished product, to ready them for the kingdom. 1 Peter 5 verse 12, By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose, I have written briefly, exhorting, and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. By Silvanus, this was Peter's penman of this short epistle that was written to help these particular saints at this particular time to understand the grace that they were to stand in at that time. This is possibly the Silas mentioned in Paul's epistles, and in the book of Acts. This is the true grace of God wherein ye stand. Grace has been present in each dispensation throughout history, and no one has ever been saved apart from grace, but each dispensation has their own variation of grace that is theirs to stand in. 1 Peter 5 verses 13 to 14, The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus my son. Greet you one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, Peter lets these Jews that have been scattered at the persecution of Stephen know that the church at Babylon are a part of the ones elected by God in the last days to be a part of the little flock or remnant. They will have to endure unto the end of the tribulation period, also known as the time of Jacob's trouble, in order to enter into the kingdom. Marcus my son, this is John Mark, the same Marcus that departed from the work with Paul and Barnabas in Acts 13. He later returned and went with Barnabas to see how the churches were doing on a later missionary journey. Paul would later call him profitable for the ministry. Here we find Marcus with Peter ministering to Jews in the dispersion all the way over in Babylon. This is where many Jews still remained from the Babylonian captivity. This epistle was probably written in between Acts 12 and 15.